Hey guys, welcome to session number 30 of the Trailer Music Composers Podcast. This is the way. One man with one microphone who is a father to three amazing children. Welcome to the Trailer Music Composers Podcast. Hey guys, welcome to another session of the Trailer Music Composers podcast. In this podcast, I wanted to talk to you specifically about something. It kind of ties in with things I've talked about before. um, And that little something is the fact that you are, under the eyes of some people, crazy. Everybody is a little crazy. And what I talk about is this. It's like, you know... You know how some if if you see somebody walking down the street and they're like talking out loud to themselves, much as I am doing now. If I didn't have a phone, some people might suspect me to be a, uh, a few slices of bread short of a loaf. Um, but what we're doing, we're all walking around, right? We're all walking around with a conversation in our head all the time. Whether that conversation is imagined arguments, whether that conversation is lyrics, whether somebody is talking or something is talking in your head, right? And uh, that could be the inner critic. And you've probably heard me mention before about having sort of multiple voices. Um, and I don't think... I want to clarify something. It's not crazy <laughs> to have multiple voices. They're just thoughts in your head. But there is one special voice... Okay? And this is, the, this is what this episode is all about. The special voice. And it's usually the quietest. The little one. Um, we're walking around. We're dealing with our daily life. We're trying to connect our daily life and our daily thoughts, our daily emotions, and transform it into something, right? Transform it into music. And amidst all this noise there is a whisper. And that whisper is the voice that I would like you guys to start to listen to. Now, a lot of my podcasts, a lot of my videos, a lot of my courses, I I want and encourage you to do the things you enjoy. And sometimes it's quite hard to know what it is you enjoy or what it is you should focus on. But the way that you can find that is by listening and listening intently to that little whisper. Um, Now, the reason I I talk about this is because I want to encourage you guys to uh, uh, think about uh, the way you're going to approach your creativity. So, obviously, you're you're sitting down and this this little whisper is going to help you throughout the whole process throughout the entire process it's very important in the minutia and it's very important on the grand scale of your career whether you want to call that little voice your uh, your true self your higher soul you know uh, God uh, the universe or you know your mind whatever that voice you whatever name tag you give that voice doesn't matter what matters is you start to listen to it. Sometimes that little voice gives you a little warning. Like when uh, I uh, lost six months worth of work because I didn't listen to that little voice saying, back up your hard drive. <laughs> Dude, back up your hard drive. I was like, nah, I'll do it tomorrow. Back up your hard drive. Nah, I've got other things to do. Back up your hard drive. Nah, I'd rather just write this piece of music. It's awesome. Oh, oh what's going on with my hard drive? hard drive failure I was getting little warnings from that little whisper um, because something was coming and that was just one aspect of it the other aspect of it is in the creative process when you're deep in the nuts and bolts and strings and skins and things of writing music there's a little voice that sometimes when you're writing will be like do this And out of nowhere, this amazing idea comes in. And that idea then shapes the way your career goes. Uh, And what it could be is it could be like a compound effect of lots of little whispers then making lots of changes to your direction. But it's so important that you listen. Uh, 
And how do you listen if you've got all this noise? Now, this is uh, one thing, uh, you know, I know Christian Henson talks about this all the time, and this has been a thing for all of time, especially with composers. You read up any biographies about well, most composers, and they will go on walks. Because what happens when you're walking? I mean, honestly, what happens in your mind, your mind quietens down, especially if you're walking in nature. Your mind quietens down. So the volume of everything else is, is quieter, so that that quiet voice becomes louder. Sometimes that quiet voice is whispering a tune. Sometimes that quiet voice is telling you to take a certain path in your career. So that's what you need to do. Find ways to get in touch with your inner composer, with your inner voice. Because that's, that little voice is going to be your guide throughout your whole career. Throughout every single day of your writing process. That little voice is kind of telling you, you've got a gift. Use it. Stop playing PlayStation. You know, <laughs> stop scrolling on Facebook. Stop listening to this blooming podcast. That little voice, if, if you hear that voice say that, stop listening to this podcast. You know, uh... Because I, if, if the message I get through today is for you to listen to that little voice that's telling you to go write your, your tra- epic trap album, do it. Just do it. Let that little voice guide you. If that little voice is saying, you know what? It's time we, saved our, we took our nest egg out, quit the day job, and go for this. Obviously, I'm... I'm highly recommending you think about that career choice securely. Make sure you've got enough money set aside. And I'm obviously not advocating you do it without the proper financial and career advice. But if that little voice is, keeps telling if that keeps popping up saying, you know what, you're not meant to be working here. You're meant to be doing music. Find any way you can to make that happen. Because then what happens, and you will notice this, the more you get in touch with that little whisper, your inspiration, your higher soul, whatever it is you call it, the louder that voice becomes, the easier it is to decipher amongst all the noise. Now another tool for this is meditation, or mindfulness, which uh, either, either or, you know, I, I prefer the meditation route myself, uh, and obviously I like these walks because I end up just blabbering. But I'm blabbering along a theme that somebody has told me to blabber on, <laughs> whether that's someone in my forums or whether that's the little voice. Um, today, I wanted you to know that you have tools to get in touch with that inspiration, that inspiring, encouraging voice that's going to help you write better music, that's going to help you make good career choices, that's going to help you sleep better. Um, you know, I know I'm going... Uh, spiritual mindset here again but that little voice is undoubtedly encouraging you to grasp your gifts and run with them I mean I I guarantee that if you're hearing that voice and you're ignoring it it's, it's saying probably shouting in a very quiet tone do some music you're supposed to be writing music that was music just in case my um my shouted whisper was confusing. You're supposed to be doing music, dude. Go and write music. Go and share it. And this ties in with the thing I was saying. Sharing your gifts with the world. If you write your music and you share it. And that is undoubtedly what that little voice is saying. The little voice says it to me too. I know this episode sounds crazy. I mean, if you, if you step out of this, you're like, okay, Rich has lost it. Uh, he's talking about the voices he's hearing. <laughs> But you would be crazy if you were to say to me that you don't hear any. Uh, That voice is telling you to grab the bull by the horns and share your gifts. This is like a PS to the last episode, which was, you know, uh, share, do service to the world, share your gifts. And that voice will be helping you and telling you to do that. And that's so important even if you just produce an album and upload it to Bandcamp and one person buys it, 
Amazing. Success. Tick. Let's do another album and see if we can get two people to buy it. Or let's run an ad campaign, see if we can get five people to buy it. You know, let's get crazy. Invest in yourself by getting in touch with your inspiration. By going for walks, by taking time to be quiet and listen, by meditating. Um, I read uh, a, a book called The Big Leap. It's amazing. It's all about this, uh, this idea that we have uh, limiting beliefs about ourselves, whether we're conscious of them or not, and that those limiting beliefs will eventually kick in to stop us doing something. But, so for example, uh, a limiting belief for you might be, I can't land a trailer. I'm not good enough to get paid that much for my music. So you'll, you'll hit that limiting belief consistently. But what you'll notice is amidst this, there is a quiet voice, even quieter than this limiting belief, saying, you can do this. You've got this. Keep going. And that is what you must do. You must push past that limiting belief. This is, there was this amazing experiment done with fleas. So fleas can jump like a huge amount, uh, like t- a huge amount times their height. I don't know, it's something like thousands of times higher than they, they actually are. They can jump a huge amount. Th- this test with fleas, right? They put these fleas in in a container with a glass lid and the fleas kept jumping and they kept them in this container for a set period of time and they would every time they jumped they'd hit this roof so the fr- the fleas believed <laughs> this sounds crazy uh, but it's it was an actual experiment uh, done in scientific conditions and stuff <laughs> uh, and then what they did one day they took the glass roof off and the fleas couldn't jump higher than this roof and obviously this roof was placed, this glass lid was placed lower than the standard jumping height of fleas. So the fleas believed, deep down, they couldn't jump higher than this glass lid. And that's insane! <laughs> so if you imagine that that glass lid is your limiting belief, uh, and whether that limiting belief glass lid is there or not, you believe that you can't jump higher than that la- glass lid. Whether that glass lid is... You can't... So, like, one of mine used to be that I found it hard to imagine getting... Uh, I don't know, more than five trailers a year. It was like a handful. I was like, you know, if I get five trailers a year, that would be, like, the dream. Do you know what? Uh, earlier this year, I got 12 placements in a single week. Like, my glass roof then was absolutely smashed. And I put that down to listening to that quiet voice. I keep, I keep thinking I'm saying choir voice. Oh, keep writing music, keep working hard. Keep writing the music, guys. Keep listening to that voice. Go for walks. Sit down, close your eyes, do some breathing exercises, do some meditation, exercise, so that you can hear that voice. That voice might say, might be telling you to write in a certain style. That voice might be telling you to make specific decisions when you're writing. That voice might be telling you, trailer music isn't for you. What you should be doing, what you really want to be doing, and that's the important part, is writing musicals. You know, it's not for me to decipher. It's for you. Obviously, that's the tricky part, and that's why I'm trying to give you tools. Walking, meditation. They're the, they're the dons, really. Go on those walks, sit down and meditate for a bit, and you will get in touch with that voice that will help you break through your limiting beliefs, and will help you be of service in the service that you are meant to be doing. And obviously, because you're listening to this, that service, deep down, you believe, is trailer music. You know, and for me, like, that that voice has guided me over many, many years, i.e., like, I knew it was music, don't know what music, let's keep writing. Oh, 
little voice says, not this music. Okay, well, maybe I'll drop that. All of a sudden, and what happens is each time I, I put faith in that, my conscience or, you know, my inspiration, my my higher soul, my, my soul, whatever. Um, each time I put faith in that, it got louder. And then what happened was this. Like, when I made a decision, like, for instance, the year I decided to quit teaching and go full-time as a composer... I was I was like this. I had I had enough money. I, I, I said to my wife, you know, I, I don't want to teach anymore. I don't know what to do, but I don't want to teach. And I started actively, like, thinking of any career I could do that could mean that I didn't have to teach so that I could pursue my career in writing. And then all of a sudden, I landed two adverts. A- and a job to score a Japanese blockbuster. Uh, a feature film, that is. And that, you know, that came pretty much at the exact moment I listened to that voice saying, stop teaching. And that's going to happen for you too. Listen to that voice. It will guide you. And it will reward you. Really lovely messages this in the last podcast episode uh, you know kind of makes me feel emotional thinking about the importance of listening to your true self and the importance of seeing you and your work as a service a gift to the world it's kind of like the little Richie inside me is crying because someone's acknowledging what they've always wanted to do and you know for instance this podcast I started there was a little voice in me years back that said you need to be doing a podcast for composers. Uh, years back. And I kind of chickened out a little bit. I, I I kind of went into it, but I kind of hit a brick wall about like how I was going to approach it. And uh, so I gave up. But that voice was still there. Still saying, do a podcast. Do a podcast. So one day... Obviously, my my th- my third child, my daughter was born. I thought, yeah, I'm on paternity leave for a few months. I'm going to do a podcast. I don't care what it's about. It's going to be about com- trailer composers. And I'm going to go around. I'm going to, you know, the first few episodes, I'm going to tell my story. Okay, obviously, I need to do that. And I'm just going to talk. I, I don't have any guests, but I'll talk because I guess I've got some important things to say. I don't know. You know, it was just a leap of faith. And I, this podcast has had more impact on my uh, school and, and more impact on composers, I believe, than my YouTube output, which is still having a, a good impact. But people are hearing what I'm saying, and it's really nice, because even these kind of uh, spiritual, you know, uh, mindset things, episodes that I'm doing... People are reaching out saying, hey, these are great. These are really helping me at the right time. And that's what I truly believe. I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm doing these at the right time for you guys. I mean, I'm not getting paid for this. I mean, I'm probably incidentally getting paid because someone's listening to this going, hey, maybe I'll try his course. Great. Thank you. For any of those of you who have listened to my podcast and then bought a course, thank you. I'm ever so, ever so grateful. But I think this, I was reading uh, Tim Ferriss's book, Tools for Titans, which is awesome, by the way. Love it. Uh, and he talks about his, uh, his rule. I don't follow this rule, but I think it's a great rule. Uh, his rule is like 99% free, 1% super premium. So like he does his podcast, he does his blogs, and he does his books, which he calls basically free, which I suppose they are. They're like, what, 15 quid. Uh, and then he does these like events where he charges $10,000 for a seat for a day's talking. And then he sells 200 of them. Uh, and I just think that's a beautiful sentiment, that actually what you're doing by doing all this free stuff is you're saying, you know, here are all the gifts I have I'm sharing with you. It's like, the you know, I'm planting seeds. We're planting seeds. We're doing our service. We're giving out good karma that will come back to us you know and you will find this you will write good music it will go out and then some other gift will come back to you i mean i'm going very spiritual here 
Um, I do believe in karma, and I do believe what you give out comes back to you tenfold. So if you give out good stuff, good stuff's coming your way. If you see, spend your time moaning and, you know, uh, complaining about everything, then you're just going to have more reason and find more things to co- moan and complain about. Yeah, I'm not saying that you, you're supposed to be sort of jumping around singing happy clappy all the time, because life cycles. You'll have good days, bad days, good weeks, bad weeks. But you must remember that you're on a journey, and if you keep that je- trajectory, that's a hard word to say, trajectory on the up, then hopefully your bad days will be shorter and less bad. Because you're listening to that little voice, and then you're doing the service that you're meant to do, which is write music. You're giving it, you're sharing it to publishers, to people, to friends, to family. Uh, and then that good stuff, that good energy you're putting out comes back. And I talk about this a lot. The energy you put into your music is what people pick up on. Uh, and, I, and I truly believe that. The, the tracks that haven't lit me up inside, I can't think of them. I can't think that they've been placed. I mean, they might have done some service to some people. Some people might have enjoyed listening to them. But the ones that really lit me up inside were the ones that have had a huge impact on me. So, for instance, one of the tracks on Piano Work 7, which is the Piano Works album released by Elephant Music, uh, Age of the Universe, that was like my favourite track on that album. Like, slow burn epic. Loved it. Nothing happened for years. Nothing happened. And then all of a sudden, LinkedIn got in touch with us, and were like, hey, we want to use this on, on, our, on our first brand campaign. <laughs> and they used it on tons of ads great this year's this year's mortgage tick because that energy was there and i continued on the path that the little voice was telling me to continue on i mean i can give you tons and tons of examples from my side i want you to start looking in your life and when you've listened to that little voice and when it's helped and how you can listen more now and how that can help your career because it's going to make a huge impact I mean you might even be going for a walk now I mean I tend to listen to podcasts when I'm walking and usually I listen to podcasts that inspire me and then I go home and do the thing I'm inspired to do so hopefully I've inspired you to go home and write some good music music that you love music that you truly believe you can share Thanks, guys. I really, really appreciate you listening. Uh, It's so lovely for me to hear all the wonderful comments and feedback from you as well. So thank you for that. And please, if you can grab a minute just to leave a review on iTunes, um, you know, that would be amazing. I'd really, really appreciate that. Thank you.